All right, welcome to Safe in the Real World. I'm Ahmed Said. In today's video, I want to walk you through the five different types of PI planning. You know what PI planning is, right? It's that two day event where everybody on the Agile release train, up to maybe 150 people, come together to have an amazing, hopefully fun event where everybody um, plans for the upcoming program increment and the upcoming program increment is between eight to 12 weeks long. So it's a fairly big affair and very involved. For the last seven years, I've helped design, facilitate, support uh, around about 30 PI plannings. And over the years, I've seen so many different variations. And today I want to talk to you about five different types of PI planning events that require different types and levels of preparation. This is especially important to know in these days with the coronavirus having changing the needs of PI planning. In just the last few days, many of the programs that I support have come to me and said, Ahmed, can you help us to put together a remote PI planning event which is completely distributed which is completely remote so we're going to be talking briefly about that as well so let's let's get started so the first five uh, uh, different types of PI planning let's start with the first one so the first one is a, a fairly standard PI planning that you may or may not be familiar with is basically the one where Everybody on the train is in one location. Everybody has come, they've come to a single event in a single geographic location. Frequently people will have had to fly in and travel in from different places if you've got a distributed team and they would come and they would come to this one event and it would be amazing because many times for the first time people are meeting each other uh, and so they can get to make all of these connections that they wouldn't have met, made otherwise. They can get to hear the same vision um, and it's just a really really awesome experience as well so that's basically what safe um, uh, recommends you know obviously it also fits in very well with the um, uh, with the agile manifesto and one of the principles of us preferring face-to-face -face communication and that's the best form of basically transferring knowledge from one per, uh, one person to the other. Um, so that's obviously the ideal and optimal um, uh, uh, structure if you can manage to get everybody coming into one location. But actually in practice what I found is, is that even with the best will in the world, even though you might say okay we can get the vast majority of people into one location, you might find that you you've got a bunch of other people in different parts of the world, different regions and stuff, they need to dial in. That can work quite well. In my experience, I've seen you create, you can create and understand you want to know in advance who's coming in versus who is going to be remote and you can design and have breakout sessions and other sessions and other rooms where you can actually facilitate and enable that communication to happen. That works quite well in, and is also a very, a very popular model that um, is quite common out there. Okay, now let's have a look at the third option you have. Now this is where you've got multiple geographical locations. Now how is that different from the second one? Well, here you've got uh, a number of large um, different events, right? So let's just say, for example, you've got one in the UK, you've got one in Germany, you've got one in India. So you've got uh, you've got three different in this scenario, three different geographical locations. You've got people coming to each of these different locations, and what you have is you have a kind of connection uh, across all of these, so everybody can see each other, how they're planning, and they're coordinated and they're aligned in that way. So that's the third type of option. Now you have the fourth option which is you have effectively the third model but what you also do have is you have similar to here you've got a few outliers over here and they'll be dialing into different places uh, as, as um, is the most appropriate uh, uh, you know, configuration. Um, and then finally, which is very, very um, topical at the moment with the coronavirus and everything else that's going on at the moment, is, is that a fully distributed PI planning event. Um, and so this is where effectively you don't have any large location where people are getting together. You just don't have that. And what you really, what you have is, is you have a group of uh, everybody, all up to 150 people, they're actually all dialing in um, 
and basically what you have is you have a remote event okay so it's like basically everybody is there and you have a remote let's just signify that with a bunch of dotted lines over there um, and they're all dialing in and then you also may have like different sections and different groups of people that need to dial into different uh, different um, uh, uh, dial in groups if you like and so in that way you have a fully distributed uh, team now there's a lot to it um, and in the following videos I'm going to show you how we can start to prepare how we can get ready what do we need to think about and I'm also going to give you some tips on how we can make a very successful fully distributed PI planning event uh, bearing in mind the fact that we've got coronavirus and so many other challenges at the moment and um, so I'll, I'll talk uh, uh, to you about that in the following video as well okay so uh, there you have it these are the five different options you have for PI planning I hope you found that useful uh, if you'd like to get more information on PI planning just click on the link below or visit us at www.sprintzero.com where you can also have a look at our, at our PI planning quiz to see how ready you are for your upcoming PI planning see you next time uh, and good luck with your PI planning thanks very much bye